إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم 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 على آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تكتمنا إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله الذي Indeed, the praise is for Allah, and therefore we praise Him, and we seek His assistance exclusively, and we seek His forgiveness, and we seek refuge from Allah from the evil which manifests from within, and the harm thereof. I give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship of Allah, highly glorified as He. He has no part in His dominion of His creation, of His creation. I give further testimony that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, Prayers and peace be upon him as his final messenger. We also extend prayers and peace upon his family, his companions, and all those gathered in righteousness and who follow thereafter. Amen. O you who believe, have taqwa to Allah. This deep and incomparable regard that is unlike the regard or reverence that we give to any other. And die not except in a state of willful submission as Muslims in this beautiful deen of Islam. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Muslims. We thank Allah, highly glorified as He, for giving us this day of Yom Jumah, this day of gathering, this day where we are allowed to have our intention for obedience to manifest collectively in community. We understand the benefits that this way of life gives us, that it is not just about the individual uh, prayer, it is not just about our individual development and growth, but this is a way of life that prioritizes the community. It prioritizes our collective action, our ability to come together and to encourage one another to be the best versions 
of ourselves. So, Allah gives us the mandate, the responsibility of stewardship, which we refer to as we have inherited through our father Adam, alayhi salam. Right, the idea of, of the Khalifa. Right, we refer to ourselves when we are responsible, when we are accountable as Muhammad. Right, at that point, we know right from wrong. We know what our responsibilities are, we know what we're supposed to do. And we are judged and held accountable. We are judged accordingly. So in this brief about today, this reminder for myself and for you, we want to address a topic which is really extremely broad. Right, the idea of leadership in the ground. Right? Tremendously broad, broad topic. But we want to look at it and ask ourselves a question before looking at leadership. You know, first, there's a statement I introduced to you, which is, it says the quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of the questions that you ask. The quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of the questions that you ask. So when we think about leadership, and we give Quranic basis and reference for it, Quran, Allah gives us, Allah SWT gives us many different examples of leadership throughout the Quran. Right? Some of those are good, and some of those, uh, some of those are not. Right? Some lead to, to, to Allah's pleasure, and some lead to punishment. Right? We have examples, uh, the prophetic examples, of course, which we take the example of, we, we take the best from those and realize that these are examples that we want to emulate. And we also have the examples of, uh, of individuals like their own, right? That take us, obviously, far away from where we want to be. Right? Uh, leadership that embodies arrogance, leadership that embodies uh, uh, disdain, corruption, uh, abuse of power. Right? So these are things that we obviously don't want to align ourselves with. But in terms of leadership within the scope of this brief reminder, this football, we want to think about the expectations, our understanding of leadership. So we first begin uh, in Surah Al Anam. Allah tells us this in the letter of Al Rahim. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ فَمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَصْلَحَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ To the last verse, the truth. We send messengers only to give the good news. مُبَشِّرِينَ To give the good news and to warn. Right? To give the news, give, give the good news and to warn. So those who believe and mend, mend uh, and the mend, the aslaha, uh, and also we use, we, we relate aslaha to the select, right? This idea of mending, of reconciling, of self-assessing, being mindful of our own conduct, being mindful of our obedience, of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how we manage the self, first and foremost, right? On those who engage in that, there's no fear of them. Right? There's no fear on them. And they will not grieve. Right? They do not, they, they're not sad. Does not mean that they will not have difficulty, that they will not have trials and tribulations, but they do not enter a state of despair. Right? That even their difficulties don't take them into a position where they have found themselves always me, always lost. Right? Because the believer has the assurance of what? Of Allah's mercy. Right? The believer has the assurance that Allah's help is what is always near. So we're going to look at leadership characteristic and leadership characteristic this idea, this concept of uh, that is mentioned here, those who mend, those who reconcile, the Aslan, right? Those who uh, hold on and embody this very important, uh, this very important in, uh, principle. So as we say, our deen is one that is not exemplified by, uh, by individual, by the individual uh, uh, effort. It is about how we relate to one another in community. JFK, um, former president of the United States, he had a statement, he said, he said, uh, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. All right? Now, how does that relate to leadership? That is a direct appeal to leadership. 
That is a direct, a direct appeal. It is saying, identify your own capacity. Identify what abilities that you have, what contributions you are able to make, and make them for the good of the collective, for the good of community, for the good of your family, for the good of your society. Identify those things. What we have found is that the best leaders, or good leaders, often they have to be good followers. You can't, you can't just assume responsibility and believe that the only time that you have something to contribute is when you're the one that's in charge. Now, by trade, uh, by trade, I'm a, I'm a journeyman iron worker. Some of you may or may not know what an iron worker is. It's a skilled tradesman. We erect bridges, skyscrapers, and you know all manner of uh, construction. And to give you a construction metaphor as it relates to leadership, and it relates to what is ahead of us, I want to mention uh, uh, this blessed month of Ramadan, which is uh, fast approaching, uh, inshallah. May Allah bless us all to, to enter into it and receive the benefits of it. I mean, but to give you a construction metaphor in terms of leadership and collective, the collective responsibility. On a construction site, you will have a buzz of activity. You'll have carpenters and electricians and drywall and bricklayers and iron workers and, and uh, you know, and, and all sorts of laborers, all working together for the same for the same end, for a particular end, all doing different things, all with different responsibilities, all with different skill sets. All right? Now, what you won't find is spectators. Well, the spectators are outside. And when we see ourselves very much in the same, uh, in the same vein as a group dedicated for the advancement of, for the stewardship of, uh, not just ourselves, right, but for the advancement and the stewardship of society as a whole. We ask ourselves, what is my, what is my ability? What is my talent? What am I here to do? Now, unfortunately, we're in a society that often pits us against one another, where we feel insecurity at not knowing something. We feel a sense of uh, an inability to contribute. We don't feel like we're enough. We have fear, and that fear, because we're standing next to somebody who knows more, no, it's not that they know more, they know different. Right? They know something different. The law, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has given you, has given me something different. Right? In the Quran, Allah tells us he turns each soul towards a goal, towards a particular, uh, particular uh, destination, gives each individual its own uh, inclination, its own aspirations and abilities. Right? And these are the things that make us, that give us the capacity to be the robust uh, uh, community, to be this, 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 uh, this, this, this body that has been raised. When we talk about you have been raised as a model community, raised as a model community, not as a model individual, but as a model community comprising different perceptions, different outlooks, different abilities, different inclinations, but all serving towards the same project. So as I mentioned, the quality of our life is going to be determined by the quality of the questions that we ask. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the, what is the project of Islam? What is the, the project of the Quran? What is the aim of the Quran? What is the aim of the prophetic tradition? What is the aim of us coming together in, in this space? Of Muslims coming together all around the world in spaces like this. What is the aim of it? Is the aim simply for us to perform the obligatory to observe the, uh, the obligation of Salat al Juma? Is that the, is that the aim? Does it end there? Or is it something bigger than that? All right, and, and this is not to downplay this beautiful gathering. All right, it's not to downplay that at all. But it is to point towards a higher, a higher calling. All right, we're here for, for a half hour. And then we, we're told, get back out there, get to it. 
But how are we going about that? And how do and how does that how does that benefit not just this community, but how does it benefit our society as a whole? So the mending, the aslan, right? This idea of mending and reconciliation. It's important for us to understand that as a part of it, we don't often think about those who have the ability to reconcile, those who have, have the ability to repair, right? And that repair begins on the inside. We don't always think about that as being a quality of, of leadership. In our society, when we look at leadership, we often think about, you know, if the person uh, can speak well, if the person looks like they are a take charge, uh, a man or woman, if they're a person who's willing to, to give orders and they act like they know what's going on, that's a good leader. But that's not, that's not what we're looking at. See, because leadership, leadership has a context. What is needed at that particular time is going to determine the qualities of leadership that we look for. And I say just like for, uh, for Prophet uh, Talmud, or next one, or the Beast, he was derided by those around him, by the children of Israel. He was derided. He was, he was criticized. They said, who is he to be a king over us? He, he hasn't been blessed with, with wealth, with money. He has no real standing. The law says, well, we have made him, we have given him knowledge, and we have given him a physical stature, given him bodily prowess. Because the challenge that, that is ahead of you is going to require more than just, just your, your, your nice name. It's going to require more than your, your, your status. It's going to require more than your nobility. It's going to require somebody who is up to the task to meet the challenge that is at hand. So we're talking, we're talking warfare, somebody who can strategize, somebody who can actually get out there and go hand to hand. Right? Because that's necessary sometimes. But I want to put you at ease. I'm not steering us towards that right now. We're at a time now where the concept, the act of, of being one who is able to reconcile and repair relationships in our society, it is, it is more important. It is more important than, uh, uh, than wealth. It is more important than, than a lot of things. I'm not gonna, I don't want to mention anything because I, I don't want it to be seen as if I'm diminishing any, any aspect of any achievement or resource that we have. But this place, having the benefit to learn just a little bit about it and how it is situated, it represents a part of, of that idea of reconciliation. That idea of, uh, of, of mending relationships, of, of forming stronger bonds. We're in a time that we are very polarized. We're put on the left, put on the right. You gotta be a Republican or a Democrat. You gotta be this or that. And there are those who benefit, they benefit from this ability to separate us. It is within our spiritual DNA, right, to first begin this idea of, of reconciling our own conduct, our own character, all right, but then taking that out, taking that out into society, into our communities, reconciling, repairing, and there's a need for that. There's a need for the Muslim who understands the importance of that, who understands the methodology behind it. Because Allah gives us the month of Ramadan, we have this ability, we are invited. We come together for the, for the uh, uh, for congregational uh, prayer, right? We fast, we increase our, our, our charity, right? We are hyper-conscious. We're trying to be the best that we can be. We're doing our best, right, to earn Allah's pleasure. We are fighting to uh, to demonstrate leadership of ourselves. And we know that even though uh, jihad or uh, the struggle, right, uh, El Jihad Al Akbar, the greatest struggle, is the struggle within. Right? It is the struggle that we engage in and we willfully and happily engage in it. 
Because we know, we know that we we receive a lost favor. We, we receive a lost favor in every act of, of getting a hold of this, this vessel that Allah has given us. That has the capacity for good and the capacity for evil. That is why we ask Allah. Right? We seek refuge with Allah from the evil which has the potential to manifest from within ourselves. And the harm that can come about. So Ramadan is an opportunity for us to develop our own leadership. The leadership over the nuts, the leadership over our, our very selves. And it's also an opportunity for us to come together with others who also understand that this is not something that is recognized just on an individual basis, but it's something that we have to move towards as a community. Right? It's something that we have the opportunity to ask ourselves, what kind of a what kind of a man, what kind of a woman do I want to be? Right? What do I need to do? What do I need to repair? And this is a constant, this is a constant process. And if you're familiar with the hadith, there's a, 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 a tribute to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The man came to him and, and uh, well, he's explaining to him. He says that there's a river behind that, you know, he went to five times a day and washed up, would you be there? Like, no, of course not. He said, that, that is the impact of your salah. That is the impact of your prayer. Right, and the prayer, once again, we see it as, a, as, a, as an opportunity for us to mend, to mend what, what we cannot help but to have torn. We cannot help the fact that when we go out into the world, when we relate with other people, that there are going to be these tiny tears. There's going to be that, that dirt that gets on us. And the Salah is a way for us to, 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 to pull out our needle and thread and, and, and get our fabric back together. Right? It's a way for us to keep ourselves whole, to keep ourselves clean. And the and in the process, and in the process, it makes us, it makes us, uh, it gives us the opportunity and the ability to, uh, to, to practice, to practice the leadership that is so necessary. Right, because one of the things that we also recognize is that it's not possible, it's not possible for us to ask for good leadership without knowing the responsibilities of a leader. It's not possible for us to uh, hold leadership accountable in any, in any facet without having knowledge. One of my teachers told me, he says, um, somebody asked him kind of a, a way out, not a way out question, but it was a question related to spiritual abuse, right? Which is a, you know, there, there are all kinds of abuses, but he said, he told us, he told us, he says, make, make the shari in your shape. Right? It means understand your religion for yourself. Right? Be a student. Have a relationship with the Quran. Right? Be able to apply it. So when you find someone who is going, going left, makes you going right, you're able to, hey, you know, you're able to be a good brother, good sister, pull somebody's coat. So leadership requires. It requires knowledge. It requires uh, uh, commitment. And it requires us understanding that we don't all have to necessarily know the same things, but we have to be committed to the same goal. So we pray that Allah will continue to bless us and to guide us and to allow us to be a community that understands that the larger goal is the most important goal. We pray that Allah allows us to be a community that is committed to reconciliation, a community that is committed, uh, committed to uh, uh, exercising and representing the highest, highest principles of leadership, which we have within our, within our tradition, in all of its view.
الحمد لله الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله أعوذ ذلك بابا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم He said that he was sent to perfect character, to refine character, or to be an example of what good character right, means. And, 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 and we know that he was known as Alameen, right, the trustworthy. And he was respected. He was loved even before he was, even before he became a prophet. Right, his character was the seed of his leadership. We can't have leadership without good character. Right, it's absolutely impossible. We can have people in positions of leadership. We can have uh, people with titles. But the true leader, the one who has good character, is one who also makes you want to step your game up to. It's the one who also makes you want to be the best version of yourself. And we have no better example of good character, of excellent character, than our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we're entering a period that is vitally important for us as Muslims. We're 2% of the population here in the United States. 2%. And that number is just right. Right? If, if Allah has the intention to, to increase those numbers, you know, a hundred to that. But the number is just right for a community that is committed to beautiful character. Because the character that we that we embody, that is what is traditionally been at the root of the spread of this beautiful thing throughout history. Right? If you study our history, you know, people will try to tell us, they will try to tell you that Islam spread by the sword. And we know that that is an absolute fallacy. The appeal of this deen, of this way of life, has always been the character of its, of its adherence. It has always been the character example. It has always been the way we treat one another. And it's always been about the way we treat ourselves. So as we begin to close, I want to give a, a, a point that I consider first, and then I ask you to consider as well. When we think about, I use the analogy of money. Right? If you're in a position where you loan anybody money, and that person said, I'm going to pay you back, Next week. Next week comes, you see that person. They don't have to say anything to you. You already got the debt on your mind. Right? And not only do you know exactly how much money that they owe you, you know, you probably remember what time it was you gave them money. You remember the weather. You might remember if it was the television on, what was, what was on in the background, if it was a, a, a radio on. You remember what song was playing? Right? You got all these facts that you can give to that person. And, you know, maybe this person is somebody who's forgetful. Maybe this is the person who wants to, to challenge. You say, hey, you owe me. You got all these facts ready for them. It was 3 o'clock on Thursday. It was raining. And I gave you $25. Right? But do we consider do we consider, and this is a wonderful exercise for us to think about as we move closer and into Ramadan. When we look at ourselves, are we reminded of the debt that we owe to Allah subhanahu wa When we look at ourselves, when we see our own reflections, when we think about the debt that we owe to the one who has given us this vessel, that is, that does our bidding, right, the mind and the body, that Allah has given us, do we consider the debt? Do we consider how we use what Allah has given us? And know, and know that Allah, just as we come from Allah, right? We are Allah's, uh, we will certainly return to Allah. 
Right? We say, you know, whenever we have a passage, in the language, in the language, in the Indeed, from Allah will come, and indeed, to, from Allah, uh, to Allah do we return. That is the final return. Are we going to return with, with the knowledge, the surety, that we have discharged responsibility with this loan that He's given us? All right, this is the part. This is the part of character. All right, we are reminded to be of those who pay their debts. Right, to fulfill their obligations. And this is the, one of the most, if not the most important thing we have, is the obligation of managing this life, managing this vessel, managing the faculties that Allah has given us. And this is still related to leadership. All right, because our first, our first effort in leadership is going to be leadership of our very, of our very selves. We can't demand anything of anybody else that we are not willing to demand of ourselves. We have a surah. Many of you, some of you may have had to commit to memory. A sifat, those brains and rights. All right, now I love making, you know, uh, the, the beautiful thing about the Quran, the beautiful thing about our deen, because it is a way of life that is not relegated to one particular moment. I love how we are able to overlay the uh, uh, the lessons that we learn and, and, and put them as a template over in our own lives. So when I'm on a, I'm on a job site, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of those ranges and ranks, and I'm thinking of that's the fact. I'm thinking of if the foreman doesn't show up, he has to leave. Then I have to be ready to step up. I have to be ready to, uh, to, to run a job. And th that happens, you know, that happens. I have to be mindful not just of how I operate in this space, but I gotta be thinking about the person next to me. I gotta be thinking about what is, what is the objective? All right, so that means that I'm constantly, constantly uh, thinking about cooperation. I'm constantly thinking about collaboration. I'm constantly thinking about the person next to me and vice versa. In our tradition, it gives us this. This is something that we just, we just have, and sometimes I feel like we may, we may even take it for granted. Right? The man is leading the brand, the man has to step back, somebody is able to step up. If it's a group of sisters praying together, somebody has to leave, you step up. So there's a commitment for uh, there's a commitment for awareness, there's a commitment for education, for knowledge. And there's a uh, there's a collective, there's a collective commitment that is over all of us. So this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful day, this is a beautiful uh, community. And what it represents, it is within the, it is within the prophetic tradition. But I'll ask, because everywhere that, uh, you know, in my, my hometown of uh, Chicago, we have, like I said, we're 2% of the population in general, but they want to ask about, uh, of that 2%, how many are carrying the load in our community? Of that 2%, maybe it's 10%, right? 10% of the 2%. So the numbers get smaller and smaller. So as we're about to come into this month of Ramadan, where we've got this heightened awareness, heightened consciousness, I want to ask, for you as I ask myself as I go back home, do you have more to give? Do you have more to give? Are you utilizing your abilities, your talents, on behalf of and in contribution to the community that serves you, the community that you, that you are part of? All right, this is a, this, and, and if not, then we say we have to do what? We have to reconcile that. All right, we have to engage in it. In outside. We have to be of those, that, that person who mends, who reconciles, who repairs. And it's for our collective benefit. So we pray that Allah, that first of all, that there's been nothing that is uh, that said that is uh, an error. So I attribute it to myself. I ask for Allah's forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness. 
I ask that the Lord continue to guide us on this path. This is the Lord to be. We ask that the Lord continues to soften our hearts, allows us to see the best in each other. We ask that the Lord protects those of us uh, who are going through difficulty, give us help. We ask that the Lord allow us to have hearts that never, never despair, that are always assured of the mercy and the nearness of the Lord. Son of God.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله